In this video, we will go through what is a parameter in Tableau, how to create a parameter, and some use cases for parameters. A parameter in Tableau is equivalent to any programming language's use of a variable, and a variable is just a symbolic way to reference a particular value. This parameter can be a number, a date, a string, or a Boolean value, which is a true or false value. So by defining a parameter in Tableau, you can reference it in calculated fields and change the outcome of the calculated fields without actually editing the field itself. Now let's jump right into creating some parameters. The simplest way to create a parameter is to click on this downwards arrow here and then create parameter, or we can select one of our fields and then right click to create a parameter, or we can right click on an empty space in this left sidebar and then create parameter. So for all parameters, we need to give it a name and we'll name this parameter minimum sales parameter and then define a data type. So choosing from the drop down menu here. And since we'll use this later on to determine the sales that are greater than this parameter value, we'll keep it as a float value. And then we can also uh, change the allowable values to either have accept all values or a list of values we define. So we can change these or have like a range of values going from one to maybe 50 with a step size of one. But now we'll just change, uh, we'll just keep this as all as a demonstration. And then if we wanna change the format of how this parameter is displayed, then we can se select the drop down menu here and then change how this number is displayed. So we know the sales are gonna be a currency, so we can change that to a currency. And then when this workbook opens, it will take on the current value. And so currently it's just one. So that's what it will take on. And then when we click OK, we'll be done creating our first parameter. And then if we want to change the value of the parameter, we just hit the right click and then show parameter so that it's shown on our view. And then we can change the parameter from here. And one last thing is that if we create a parameter from one of the fields, then it will take on the range of value that that field has. So for sales, the range of values for sales was from 0. 0.444 to 22,600 approximately. But although it's inheriting this range of values, we can also change this to have allow all values if we wanted to. The next thing we're going to go through is the options to interactively change the parameter values. So depending on what type of allowable values you select, your options will change. What I mean by this is if we edit this and select uh, allowable values as a list, here I'll just type in a couple numbers, and then we can see that well, if we click the downwards arrow here, we have a couple of options where it will show how you can interactively change the values. So a single value list is just radio button list. A compact list is just a list shown this way. A slider is exactly what it sounds like, just a slider for you to change your values. And then a type in is just you typing in your values. And then if we change this to a range of values, we have different options. So we only have the slider or type in option. And we have the least options when we have when we choose the allowable values as all, because Tableau can't tell what kind of like values that you have. So it just allows type ins. So if your parameter data type is a float, you will only be able to type in numbers. So if we try to type in Tableau in here, nothing happens and the value won't change because it only accepts float numbers. So for your data types, for float and integers, it only accepts numbers. For strings, it can accept any value. And then for Boolean, it's just true or false. And then for date, it's just calendar values. So we can show what date would look like. It will give you a calendar that you can select a value from, or you can type it in specifically and change the year. Now that we know how to create and change parameters, I'm going to show you some example use cases with parameters. So here in this view, we have a bar chart showing the total sales for each state. And I want to see which states have sales greater than $10,000 and which states have less. What we can do is create a calculated field, which I've done here called sales group. 
That's essentially a conditional statement. So if the sum of sales is greater than $10,000, then it is above or else it's below. And we can drag this calculated field up to the color marks. And we can see that for the bars that are blue, they're greater than 10,000. And then for the bars that are orange, they're less than 10,000. But now what if we wanted to see the states that have more than 50,000? what we would have to do is go back into the sales group calculated field and change this value because it is fixed. This can be very tedious if you want to use this in a dashboard. So what we can do instead of hard coding a number in is we can input a parameter that references a value that can be easily changed on this right sidebar here. So my parameter is called sales parameter, which is what I'm gonna put into here. And I'll show you exactly what the sales parameter is by editing it here. So it is an integer type with the current value at $10,000 and it has a range of values from 10,000 to 200,000 with step sizes of 10,000. So when, we're, when we change this parameter, we can see that the bar chart changes as well and the range changes. So this is a dynamically changing calculated field, which is a lot more intuitive and if you wanted to make changes, it's a lot easier to do. So this is just a very simple use case of parameters, but there are many other applications for using parameters as they help make your workbooks a lot more interactive. Next, we'll go through a ranking use case with parameters. We have the same view as before, so a bar chart showing the total sales for each state and province. And if we wanted to see the top five best-selling states, what we can do is create a, another calculated field, which I've done here, called rank sales and it's another conditional statement so if the rank of the sum of sales is less than or equal to our sales top end parameter then show otherwise hide and this parameter is just an integer value that stating maybe we want to see our top 10 or top 15 and we can change that so i'll show you the result of this first then go through the creation of the parameter and here on the right side you can see that our parameter value is 10 so theoretically, when we move this into the color, we will see the top 10 best-selling states as orange. What we can do is if we want to only see those 10 states, we can just drag it into filters and then just show. So we only see these top 10 best-selling states. And for clarity, we can have the sum of sales as a label. And then also another thing we can do with sales is since we know that it's a currency, we can change the default property of the format to currency so every time we drag it into the view it will be a currency and we can see that these have changed to all currencies and now let's go through how this parameter was made so this parameter is just an integer value uh, data type with the current value being 10 and the minimum is 1 to 50 which is a range of values and also the good thing about this is when it's a filter you can filter for how many you want to see so since uh, we had it as 10 before if you drag it to like another number We'll only be able to see like the top 20 or top 10 or however many we want to see So we can also take a look at how this ranking works and what I've done here in the sheet is created a calculated field that's just the rank of sum of sales, which is the Expression we had in the rank of sales and what that does is it just ranks the sales based off of which one's the highest. So the highest one would be rank one and the lowest one would be rank 59. And this example concludes this parameters in Tableau video and stay tuned for a future video where I'll go through more advanced parameter use cases. I hope this video was useful for you and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to be updated every time I post a new video, I would love for you to subscribe to me. I post a new video every Thursday.